Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at digestion, the mechanical and the chemical elements of it and how they all work together. The digestive system is quite a large system and it's got various different parts. You need to know the name and function of each of the parts. So we'll start over here. This is the tongue. It helps to obviously move food around while you're chewing it. This is the mouth entrance to where the food goes in. This is the salivary glands. Two of them. They help to release amylase and enzymes so that your food gets digested while it's still in your mouth. This is the esophagus. Esophagus leads down into the stomach. Now I'm going to trace the alimentary canal Basically, it's a fancy way of saying the tube the food flows through. So it goes through the mouth, down the esophagus, into the stomach. This part over here is the duodenum. And then from the duodenum, it goes into the ileum. These two together are the small intestine. From the ileum, it traces along past the appendix till the food ends up in the colon. The food goes along the colon through to the rectum. These two pieces together are known as the large intestine. And the food exits through the anus. Right, now that's the alimentary canal, but you'll notice that there are a couple of other organs in between. So here we have the pancreas, which makes enzymes and is responsible for blood glucose regulation. We've got the liver over here, parts of the digestive system, but not part of the alimentary canal. And this over here is the gallbladder. The gallbladder stores enzymes and bile made by the liver. So that's the digestive system and all its parts. Once you know the parts of the digestive system, you also need to be able to say what happens in each part. So this over here is the mouth. These are the salivary glands. Again, this is the esophagus. Right, and in the mouth, the salivary glands produce an enzyme called amylase. And amylase is responsible for digesting carbohydrates into maltose or glucose. Right, so amylase digests carbohydrates into maltose or glucose. The pH of the mouth is round about 8, so it's an alkaline pH. Once the mouth has added amylase enzyme, the bolus of food, which is literally the ball of food, there we go, let's draw that, that passes down the esophagus, it goes by peristalsis down to the stomach. So, one enzyme is made in the mouth. In the lower part of the digestive system, you have the liver, the stomach, you have the pancreas, you're going to have the co collectively the small intestine and the large intestine. So here you have large intestine. Remember that's made up of the colon and the rectum. We've got the small intestine, which is made up of the duodenum and the ileum. These two together make up your small intestine. Let's put the anus on over there. Right, so in this part of the digestive system, you've got the stomach. Now the stomach has a stomach lining 
and inside the stomach lining the enzyme pepsin is made and hydrochloric acid is made not an enzyme but stomach acid is quite important now pepsin digests proteins into amino acids hydrochloric acid has two functions the first is make the stomach acidic so it changes the environment to an acidic one and the second one is that it destroys microorganisms so it's one of those lines of defense that your body has against pathogens now because I've said that it's acid the pH here is more or less 2 All right now you'll notice that in the stomach you've got two things so at the top you had the mouth which had one in the stomach you've got two now down in the small intestine you've got four chemicals that act. Now the first chemical in the small intestine comes from the liver. It is called lipase. Lipase is an enzyme. Drop that there as well. Lipase digests lipids into three fatty acids and glycerol. lipase is made by the liver. The liver also makes another chemical called bile. Now bile, like hydrochloric acid, has two functions. It makes the small intestine alkaline. And it emulsifies fats. What that means is that it takes these big globules of fat that have been eaten and it breaks them down into little molecules. Where after the lipase is able to just come along and digest the molecules of fat much easier than it could if the globules were bigger. Now, I've said that bile makes a small intestine alkali. That means the small intestine has a pH of around about 8. So you've got a pH of 2 in the stomach and a pH of around about 8 in the small intestine. But I've also said that there are four chemicals in the small intestine. The other chemicals come from the pancreas. The pancreas creates trypsin which is also an enzyme, and trypsin digests proteins into amino acids. Now it's not interchangeable with pepsin because pepsin works in an acidic environment, whereas trypsin works in the alkaline environment. So pepsin has to be in the stomach, trypsin has to be in the small intestine. And the second chemical that the pancreas makes is pancreatic amylase. Now we've seen amylase before, but that was salivary amylase. This is pancreatic amylase, also an enzyme. Pancreatic amylase does exactly the same as salivary amylase. It breaks down carbohydrates into maltose or glucose. Now, sometimes you'll see another enzyme mentioned, maltase. Maltase, easy one, it breaks down maltose into glucose. Maltase will almost always be in the small intestine. Right, so it goes one for one chemical in the mouth, amylase, two for two chemicals in the stomach, pepsin and hydrochloric acid, and four for four chemicals in the small intestine. You've got bile, lipase, trypsin, and pancreatic amylase. Now, if you feel that's hugely difficult to remember, 
I just want to highlight something to you quickly. Have a look at the left hand side here where the letters are L I L I L I bile liver and lipase all have an L I in them which means lipase and bile are made in the liver whereas the others don't have the L I so it'll help you determine what is made where peristalsis is a method of muscle contraction to move the bolus of food from one place in the alimentary canal to another so what happens is muscles at the top of the food over here will contract and push the ball of food downwards and then as the bolus of food moves muscles above it again will contract and then the bolus will move and then muscles will contract and then the bolus will move and muscles will contract and the bolus will move so peristalsis is the contraction of muscles of the alimentary canal in order to move the bolus along the digestive tract. Now, alimentary canal and digestive tract are interchangeable words. They're pretty much the same thing. Digestive system also incorporates the things that are in the alimentary canal and the organs that make the enzymes for the digestive system. As food gets digested in the small intestine, there are small protrusions called villi. Now, the diagram on the right is actually these little protrusions on the left enlarged. Right, so you'll see that the small intestine is a tube and all along the edges of the tube, all along the edges of the tube, you've got these tiny protrusions. They are called villi. Villi is the plural, villus is one. So two of them villi, one of them villus. Now the villi are responsible for absorbing the broken down particles of food created by digestion. The definition for digestion is obviously the breakdown of food molecules from large insoluble molecules to small soluble molecules. So food gets broken down, carbohydrates get broken down into the monomer glucose, proteins get broken down into amino acids and lipids get broken down into glycerol and three fatty acids. Now what happens with them is that glucose and amino acids get absorbed into the villus into the bloodstream and then it flows around the body from the bloodstream. The glycerol and three fatty acids get absorbed through the protrusion down the center of the villus. They give you some labels. This is the epithelium. These are the blood vessels. And you can see that some vessels are oxygenated and some vessels are deoxygenated. The blood flows obviously in this direction in this diagram. And down here you've got something called the lacteal. And the lacteal is part of the lymphatic system. And the glycerol and three fatty acids enter the lymphatic system. They don't go into the blood vessels. The lymphatic system then distributes the glycerol and the three fatty acids around the body. Now, the most popular question about the structure of the villus is why is it this shape? How is the villus adapted for the absorption of food molecules? So you've got a couple of points that you can mention here for your marks. Large surface area. So you've got a large surface area because of the folds and that is for faster diffusion. You've got the single layer of epi 
epithelial cells. And that is a gain for faster diffusion or better absorption of the molecules. And you've got a large network of blood vessels. And that creates a greater surface area for absorption. Right, so you've got the three things that you could say for your marks there. Don't forget the shape of the villus is hugely important. Sometimes they ask you about microvilli, so sometimes these cells have little villi on top of them. The microvilli are for exactly the same reason. They have a large surface area for faster diffusion. They are there to increase surface area. They're found in a single layer of epithelial cells and there's a large network of blood capillaries for greater diffusion and a, a larger surface area. Ouch. Mm, I'll be too crammed.